large number of people. In 1961, there were nearly 440 million of them, and this figure is increasing annually. These people, Great Deccan and Plateau, there are many similar villages on which the people depend for their existence. Nine out of every ten Indians work the land, but because of poor soil and old farming methods, many villages are barely self-supporting and are not productive enough to help their poorer neighbors. Cattle have meager pasture on this sun-scorched landscape. The animals which thrive best are the goats. They can live on poor grass in dry... Oxen are widely used for drawing carts, plowing. The Deccan soil receives only 20 to 40 inches of rain each year, and so dry zone crops are grown. They include ground nuts, cotton and millet, which is the staple food of the people living here. These women are gathering millet, called bajra. The crop is carried away in baskets for threshing. The bajra is threshed by oxen. In this way, these are separated from the stalks. Another major village crop is sugar. The cane is cut, and after its foliage has been removed, it's fed into a mechanical crusher which presses out the juice. Having passed through the machine, the crushed cane is taken away and burnt. This waste provides fuel for the fire on which the juice is boiled for four or five hours. A thick brown sugar called jagri is eventually produced. Oxen are also employed for drawing water. This is the traditional method. It's slow and strenuous. At this brick-lined well, a new method is being used. Here, the diesel pump is at work to supply water for irrigating the nearby fields. Water for bathing and washing is stored in the village reservoir, or tank, as it is called. Men, women, children and oxen use the tank, which is simply constructed by damming the stream with mud walls so that the water forms a lake. The women do their washing at the water's edge. They beat the clothes on stones and spread them out to dry under the hot sun.
some of the water from the tank is carried back to the village where it's used for cooking purposes. This woman is making chapati. For protein, the villagers rely upon goat meat, split peas, maize, buffalo milk and rice imported from other provinces of India. Foodstuffs are bought and sold at the local market. Some people take their goods to market by ox cart. Others load up their asses and ponies. While most make their way on foot. The market is the centre of village life. It's a meeting place for the people to exchange gossip as well as money and produce. All kinds of foodstuffs, household articles, materials and clothing are on display. Trading is simple and effective. There is no self-service here. The customer just sits down on the ground and begins to haggle with the seller until an agreement is reached. The snake charmer provides one of the local entertainments. This cobra seems rather unfriendly. Pottery is a traditional craft. The potter's wheel is made from human hair and cow dung and weighs over 100 weight. A mixture of clay and dung is used for the pot. Local factory industries are springing up in many villages. This small foundry produces important agricultural equipment. Plowshares, wheels, cogs and water pump castings are made. Just as important as the development of agriculture and industry in India today is the development of education because it is ignorance that hampers the country's progress. These children are learning to read and write. Adult education is part of a national program which aims to make adults up to the age of 40 literate. Children who learn to read and write often spend their time giving lessons to their elders. play outside the temple at Aund each day. The music is played on the tambura and drums. A dancer joins the singing musicians and this tradition forms a link between the India of the past and the slowly developing India of today.